don't visit London before watching this video because I will tell you everything that you need to know about the city like when is the best time to come, in which area should you stay, what is worth visiting and what is actually better just to avoid and all those small little details that will just make your trip to the city so much more pleasant. Hi Curious Gang, it's your London friend Vasi that also loves traveling and if you want to see more videos from the city or travel related content where we are always on a budget don't forget to hit the subscribe bell button down below because it really means the world to me also you will get so many free tips today's video is actually inspired by one lovely girl which follows me here on YouTube and she asked me for an advice uh, to plan her trip to London and I thought that this might be a great video also for other lovely people like you that are planning their trip here to London in 2022. November and December are really great months to visit if you want to enjoy the Christmas lights, uh, the Christmas markets or winter wonderland. However, if you prefer having warmer weather, I would suggest you coming in like late spring anywhere from May until August. In terms of like how long, I would say that three days are really the bare minimum if you want to see only the must things and up to one week would be a good amount of time. But really guys, there are really no limits. You could come here for a month and you would still have things to explore. I would highly highly recommend you staying in central London or anywhere into zone 1 because otherwise if you go a little bit outside of the city yes it will be cheaper but your train ticket or the metro ticket will be more expensive and on top of that you will easily spend two hours into the train going to your hotel. What I suggest you doing is choosing the area where to stay depending on what you would like to visit. For example, you can stay at Bloomsbury and Fitzrovia if you want to be around museums, cafes and also not too far from the shopping areas. However, if you prefer being more in the modern part of the city, you like seeing big shiny sized skyscrapers or also you want to see some of the history of the city, then the city of London would be a great area for you. Covent Garden is a fantastic place to be in, especially if it is your first time in London because you will be close to the theatres, to the museums and also not too far from Piccadilly or Leicester Square. And by the way, you guys, fun fact, the first year that I was in London I really couldn't say Leicester Square, so every time I was saying like Leicester Square and I was sure that this is correct. For anyone looking for a little bit more of an alternative experience and who wants to enjoy street art, vintage markets, also kind of cool food markets as well, Shoreditch will be the best place for you. And if you find this video useful, don't forget to hit the subscribe bell button down below for more cool content from the city. Going to the other opposite, if you prefer luxury shopping and fine dining, then West London will be definitely better for you. What good areas will be Belgravia, Melfair or Merrily Bow. Anyone that kind of likes the crowds and want to be in the center of everything happening, then I would suggest you staying in Soho or around Piccadilly and Leicester Square. Another way in which you can choose the area where to stay is depending on where do I arrive. If you come by train from the UK or like of course with Eurostar, you can decide to stay around King's Cross because it will be very convenient for you or you can also go to Camden for a little bit more of an alternative experience and to enjoy some street art as well or not even to mention the incredible food market. A little bit more calmer area especially for the ones of you that would like to visit the London Eye would be South Bank or Bankside and from there you will have easy access to Ted Modern and Ted Britain as well and not too far from Borough Market 
for which I made a whole video about, which will be also linked in here. Oh, and lastly, if you're looking for more of like traditional sightseeing, then uh, staying around Westminster area would be the best for you because of course you'll be close to Westminster, duh, and also to Buckingham Palace, St. James's Park and all this like super traditional sightseeing sites in the city. thinking of renting a car when you come into London, I really couldn't suggest you more not to do it just because of the, all the traffic jams and the cost of the car rental and the parking and just all the headaches that come with it so I really suggest you not to do it. What you can do instead of course is use the public transport which is really efficient especially the underground like in peak hours it runs every minute so you can easily get from point A to point B. If you get scared by looking at this uh, very confusing map don't worry I was there as well but then I realized that Google Maps works very well in the city so it can really help you out move around even a better application to download before coming into London it's called city mapper because it will not only tell you how to get from point A to point B it also will tell you when does uh, the next metro come or also how much you're going to spend by choosing the different types of transport and for those late evening when you don't really want to figure out this complicated map and you would just rather uh, take a taxi to go somewhere I would suggest you not using the cabs here in London they're quite pricey let me tell you that the only time when I had used one was when I was like very very late for my flight and I was about to miss it so it's more like life or death situation the rest of the cases I will always suggest you using an Uber According to Airbnb, the average price of a one night stay in London is £115, but according to Booking, it's actually a lot cheaper, it's around £80. So maybe if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly, I would suggest you using Booking.com, which is also my personal favourite. Let's get this thing straight. There are tons of museums, galleries and attractions and just like millions of things to do in London. What I actually suggest you doing it is uh, choosing only the things that interest you. For example, if you like modern art, you can go to Ted Modern or to Ted Britain or to the v a Museum. May I May I suggest you a couple of things to do which personally I really liked and I think you might like them as well. A total must it is uh, visiting a market in London. My personal favorite it is the Borough Market because it is the biggest one and it has the greatest variety. You should also definitely go to Covent Garden and also to Chinatown to have some delicious treats. You can also go to Shoreditch and Brick Lane for some more of alternative vibe and you can also go to Camden Town and visit their market as well and not to forget the Kyoto Gardens which are the Japanese gardens that recently became very popular on TikTok and I would say it's for a good reason. These ones are totally worth visiting. First of all, the London Eye. Because of the crowds and because of its price, uh, I just don't think it is worth it anymore. What you can do instead is take the Emirates cable cars, which are definitely not as popular and offer some great views as well. Or something which you can do for free is go to Pimrose Hill. Another attraction to avoid it is the Madame Tussauds Museum, which is not unique to London. Instead, going to the British Museum or to the V&A Museum. 
Something which you should definitely avoid at all costs it is eating at Leicester Square. This area it is just made for tourists. What you can do instead it is head to Chinatown which is an area loved by locals and for a good reason. Here are two videos that you can watch and pick the restaurants that you like. If you're looking for some authentic fish and chips, then I suggest you the golden chippy. If you want some Italian pasta, then Miscusi and Emilia's crafted pasta are great choices. If you want some sushi, then you can go to Eat Tokyo. But if you're looking for some Indian food, then this room is a great place. By the way, they also have a great brunch as well. You can go to Fat Fuck for some pho and Vietnamese food or just visit one of uh, London's markets where you can find pretty much all worldwide cuisines. And don't forget to enjoy the city of London. Love you all! Bye! And don't forget to subscribe!